sticky sort of weather, we're going to be looking at fly striking it. Absolutely. So yes, um, well, humidity is the big driver for fly larval development and uh, pupation, and hence the the fly. And so. Um, I think everyone needs to be aware that this is going to be a risk period for, for fly strike. Mm. Two types, is the primary and the secondary? Yep, so it's quite important to understand the difference. Primary strike is driven by a couple of different flies and the big nasty is the uh, Lucilia caprina, the, the, uh, the, green, the green Australian strike fly. So primary strike basically means that maggots that are, that are produced by primary strike flies will uh, regardless of whether there's a wound or not in the skin, they'll burrow into intact skin and, and make, a, make a strike wound. Where secondary strike flies, uh, a lot of common species will cause this and those maggots will feed on an already damaged piece of skin. So if there's a wound already there or perhaps there's some primary strike been set up, then we can get secondary strike uh, after that. We've already got damaged and bleeding skin that's exuding blood and exudate well then uh, secondary strike flies can get involved. So Now we automatically think that it's going to be around the back end because of dags, but those green ones will go into folds in the skin. Absolutely, so merinos are a classic breed to get, to get strike, but there's another couple of uh, big issues that people should be aware of. Um, ram, um, rams that have been fighting, we get wounds around the pole. Pole strikes very, very common in rams, so that's one area to be aware of. If there's foot problems, if there's foot rot, actually where the animal sits, if we get that smelly, horrible foot rotty exudate on the flanks of the animals when they've been lying, well then that's another common cause of, of strike. Around the pizzle, so I guess that brings into uh, into the into the spotlight, perhaps preventative measures when we're talking about um, breaching and crutching animals is obviously very very important and and high risk uh, times and high risk animals uh, to to try and prevent these situations. So, crutching is very important. Yep, very important. Um, obviously, the maggots end up protected under the under the wool layer and um, protected from desiccation. Where we, if we've got exposed skin, it's much much less likely to be struck. And not only that, obviously, it's much easier to detect these things in the open bare skin than under fleece. And we all, I'm sure, we've all experienced badly struck animals that we, that just without the behavioural signs, we've just had no idea until you really get and part the wool and have a look you can see the extent of the fly strike. Let's talk about those symptoms because they are very obvious when you when you see them. Yeah, so um, usually you get an animal that's obviously agitated, often uh, nibbling or grinding of the teeth that, that are what sheep will do when they're experiencing you know, pain and discomfort. Um, you tend to get just a, a slight discolouring actually in the fleece rather than anything and I think it's just the wool soaking up the the exudate and the, the, the goop that's produced by the maggots. Um, but they're quite subtle and so um, really behavioural signs are the hallmark. It's not like the people that are that are unakin to dealing with strike, you know, you may think, oh goodness me, you know, there's lots of maggots eating through this live animal. Um, you think you'd see something pretty horrible, but when you've got even small amounts of, of uh, wool, it can be hidden very, very easily. And so yeah, it really is the behavioural signs, the animal that's that's nibbling and grinding and uh, and, and getting depressed. Yeah, they're, they're, the, they're, the, they're the symptoms. Chemical treatment. Chemical treatments, well, there's, uh, there's quite a few different groups of treatment, but by far and wide, uh, in the very recent times, uh, that the whole the technology of, of chemical treatment of, of fly strike has very much weighted towards what we call the IGR, IGRs or the insect growth regulators. They're much safer to deal with um, and they have very, very good residual activity. They tend to be formulated in formulas that spread through the lanolin layer, the oily layer of the fleece very well. <coughs> and so they're much more akin to being um, being put, put on through topical application rather than these uh, these old fashioned uh, plunge dipping and yep. shower <clears throat> dips that everyone will remember because they weren't they, they weren't, it weren't was that, damn hard work they Nick. weren't that <laughs> far away used but yeah in very recent times the old stripes across the back uh, the back line there that's the sort of products that dominate these days um, 
yeah, the, you have to be careful on um, application rates, whether they're off shares or, or, or full fleece, and also mm. the, the breed that we're dealing with, whether we're dealing with long long fleece breeds or, or short or fleece downs. breeds. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Withholding periods? Yeah, very important to be, to be aware of. Must must be aware of withholding periods, especially uh, not only for meat, which obviously is at the top of everyone's mind, but also wool residue is very, very important. Make sure that the product doesn't have a wool residue um, because um, they do test. They do test for, for wool residue. And yeah, it's so obviously important not to have contaminated product going out. It's, um, it's for the benefit of of the, the nation and, and the industry. That, that, that's a, a, and a the big test. message really is just to keep monitoring your flock, isn't it? Absolutely. Well, I, I sort of harp on about this for just about every condition we talk about. But you know, good good hands-on monitoring of the animals that are under your care are very very important. And I, I guess we don't need to harp on about that. There's been enough sort of welfare concerns in various uh, disciplines of the of the agricultural uh, e economic areas recently and I, I don't think we need to harp yeah, on exactly. enough. So, But, it, but yeah. everybody should take it on board, Nick. Thank you very Absolutely. much indeed.